Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome back to our home renovation remodel thing. It is Monday, February 14th, and uh, I am alone today. So Donovan is off at uh, one of his other jobs. We'll be back on Wednesday and we'll finish removing our uh, two load-bearing exterior walls when he's back. Uh, in his absence, I have been tasked with removing this, uh, this floor out of here. <laughs> so Donovan had thought or at least hoped that the floor would be able to come in sheets, but uh, that's not going to be the case uh, at all. So we have uh, a tile on top here. I think this is slate. And then that is in thin set, obviously, down to a piece of cement board. And then the, uh, the tricky part is that the cement board is then adhered to the subfloor. The hope was getting a pry bar underneath the cement board would allow you to pull the whole cement board up with all the tile in one big piece. But the cement board will not come up without completely disintegrating. So that should, uh, should be interesting. <laughs> So I spent the morning going around to a few different stores looking for a wide uh, floor scraper because uh, that would probably be really nice for this. But the widest thing I could find is a two inch scraper. So I'm going to see uh, where this gets me and at least at the very least I can get the tile out of here and then I'll have to deal with the cement board later. But uh, at least I'll make a dent in the progress uh, today.
so after about an hour and a half, this is how far I am. And I have come up with a little bit of a different strategy. So instead of using the chisel and trying to get underneath the uh, cement board and prying it up and trying to get it up in chunks, I am coming down from the top and basically like jackhammering <laughs> this into like bits and pieces and then coming in and removing what I whatever's left still with the pry bar and hammer, which seems to be, it feels like it's going faster. I highly doubt it is, but at least it feels easier than uh, trying to get underneath it and pry it out. So anyway, that's, that's where I'm at. It's been an hour and a half and I've removed nine, nine tiles in an hour and a half. <laughs> This is, this is this is something. It's all leaving in five gallon buckets. There's no big chunks. How's it going? Huh? How's it going? Good or bad? That's terrible. This is gonna take me like way. Take a thousand hours? Yeah. It's loud, but I was like, that's making it's progress, but it doesn't look like it. Nope.
All right, so there is the progress so far. Definitely a very slow uh, going thing, but uh, uh, I still have a lot to go. <laughs> so uh, our plumber Mike is here. He's been installing the in-floor heat out here in the sunroom. So we're gonna go uh, take a look at some of that real quick before getting back to this. All right, everybody, we got our favorite plumber Mike is back again. How you doing? You made it. I made it. <laughs> I made it. It looks a little different now. You can actually like walk here now. Looks very good. And you know your your pex is somewhere under there, safe and sound. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. So Mike is back today working on getting the the ceiling or be the floor of the sunroom tied into the in floor heat. So this is we talked about a little bit in the last video you were in when we were doing the floor with the uh, the subfloor has these transfer plates on it. So instead of the whole concrete floor having an embedded tube in it, now we're into essentially like a radiator that radiates into the subfloor, then radiates into whatever the actual flooring is Correct. on top of that. Correct. Right? Yep. You got it. You nailed it. Yeah. So as far as the install though, it's very, I mean, same, same exact pecs, right? Correct. Same, yep. same pecs. And then obviously you have fewer loops, I think. Right? Or is it the same spacing? Uh, these are a little wider spacing. Um, on the floor, we did about six inch spacings. Up on the joists, we're going to be doing about eight inch um, because we can't control the six inch part because of the joist interference. Right. So you got to work around the joist. Got to work around the joist. Yep. So you're going essentially two, two channels or two transfer plates per joist cavity. Yeah, and if you look if, at this, if you were to measure this out, this is approximately eight inches. And then if you were to, to measure these two, it would be the same distance. Okay. Incorporating, so they're, we're, we're trying to get about an eight inch um, average uh, mm -hmm. for the loop um, to, to, to equal it out for the, whole, for the whole floor. That makes sense. And those transfer plates, just aluminum? They're just aluminum. Aluminum's the best uh, heat transfer uh, material that's out there. Um, you know, um, the, it just absorbs it and transfers it really well. Uh, most transfer panels or transfer plates mm -hmm. are aluminum. This is one particular product that uh, I, I particularly like to use because it's a lot easier to, for me to install. But they also have some like, they're like pans um, where you would have the tube up there and you would put the pans on and staple the pans on. Oh. So okay. there's, there's, there's a couple different sizes and those usually have a little wider, um, they're, they're wider. These panels are four inch wide. I think those are like six or eight inch wide. Mm -hmm. um, they're not as a thick, these are a very thick aluminum. Um, so they're, they're, the, the staple up methods are a little thinner. Um, you just don't get quite the transfer, in my opinion, that you do on these thicker aluminum ones. Right, because the subfloors really have that kind of thermal mass like the concrete does. Correct. Right, so that's, that's kind of the, the big difference between the floor, the concrete floor and then the subfloor thing is you got this giant thermal mass thing and right this, this isn't as good as a conductor of, of heat wood right it's yeah there's not not a very good conductor of heat at all <laughs> um so the, the the big thing with this stuff is 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 insulating the bottom side that's a that's a huge right we very you huge. mentioned that briefly last time too is having some kind of thing there that directs the heat only up yeah so what we'll have is uh um it's like an aluminum foil pan, uh, type to help direct the heat up because that'll warm up and direct the heat up. And then underneath that, we'll have some sort of um, fiberglass insulation. Um, that our, our trick is to get more insulation on the bottom of the tubes to drive the heat up. So we need to have a higher R value in the insulating factor uh, on the bottom side than what the flooring. I think plywood is like a R1 or R2. It's not, it's not very, uh, you know, uh, resistant to the cold. So, so we don't have to get too much insulation underneath there, but the more the merrier. We want to make sure that the heat drives up and not down. Right, and you're pretty much done with the, the ceiling in here. You got what, one more bay? Uh, two, two? two more bays left, yep. And you've been having fun working around all the uh, other things that are up there already. One of the things that was kind of fun for me is like the timing and sequencing of everything that has to go up here. Yes. There's a lot of things that have to go up here and a lot of things kind of like are in each other's way. 
Yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. It, it's uh, it, it, we all have to be team players. Right. Um, uh, we're kind of all fighting for the same real estate. Um, we're very fortunate here. I mean, my tubes are up high, so that really doesn't interfere with the ducting or electrical. Uh, doesn't it doesn't interfere with with much. Right. Um, so. I kind of can let people, I just gotta get my stuff up first and let them do what they're gonna do and then I just have to work around yeah. what they have um, in, to, to, to put in, so. Yeah, it's been, it's been cool to see. So we have this last little loop. So when we had the floor, we had two loops, yep. right? And this is two loops again? It, it, yep, exactly the same, same t basically the exact same amount of tubing, give or take a few. <laughs> a few, maybe 50 feet, it might be the difference. So right. um, it'll be two loops for both the, the basement and for upstairs. And uh, yeah, it should be, should be fun. Right, so then we, so before, down here is our floor loops coming out of the floor. So they survived. They survived, by the yes. way. <laughs> yes, and still held air when they I got here. still had pressure, I was watching that gauge. Yes, yep. <laughs> so they're, they're coming out of the floor and then we'll tie in uh, everything into the utility room and the other on the other side of this wall here. So there's going to be a fertile wall here, and then all your tubes are going to be hidden inside that wall. So this will all come through and then pop through that rim there and into the next room. Um, so how does this, this is kind of presses into the transfer plates to the PEX for this stuff? Yes, it's it. So the you know we the the tubes once they get heated up they they uh, they soften up. So these panels are designed to really kind of keep the tube squeezed. And so when we're putting them in and it, uh, new, fresh out of the roll, um, they are very difficult to <laughs> get in. Um, so I have this special tool that is, uh, um, it's almost, uh, most people would, would uh, compare it to a palm nailer, but it has a rubber uh, pad on it. And so what we'll do is we would hold that up as the, as the plate is up there, we would hold that up, we'd run the tube across and then this, this pounds the tube in uh, or snaps. Most people like the word snap. <laughs> it snaps the tube in uh, to the transfer plate and then um, it, it's got a very solid um, holder on it, I guess would be the best way to, it snaps in and you ain't, no matter how hot the tubes get, they're, they're not, they're not they're falling just, they're out. They're going to flop out on you? Yeah, we don't like the flopping out <laughs> part. Uh, pretty rare for it to happen. Um, typically, if it does start to flop out, it never fully got fully inserted to begin with. Mm -hmm. That's usually the, what ends up happening. So right. um, if it doesn't, isn't fully in, then it'll the loop. This stuff is great, but if it's unsupported and 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 doesn't have any anything to cling on to, mm -hmm. um, it becomes a spaghetti noodle. Right. Once it's heated, so.
So that takes care of all of the, uh, the pecs in the floor in here. We still have more in other places to do, which I'll come back and do later. Yeah, That's quite a bit more. <laughs> At some point, but I think next time when you're back, are you gonna be manifolds next time? Or are you, um, what are you thinking? We can't wait yeah. to see it back again. Yeah, the manifolds, um, we're waiting on a few things to happen in that room before we can get the manifolds up. And I think the next time I come back, it'll be to um, move some lines that were in need of moving, <laughs> that were not prevalent until the demolition. Oh, um, the, uh, those ones? Um, the ones upstairs. Oh, oh, those ones. Yeah, I think there was a wall that's going to be built. We'll have to reroute some lines. We got that too. So I guess you got several rerouting things to do because you got this manifold that's in a hallway, which needs to go somewhere else. And then you got some lines to reroute upstairs as well. And uh, some more new loops somewhere. We'll find a spot for new loops. <laughs> we'll, we'll make some more. We'll put some more in. All right, well, thanks again, Mike, for allowing us to take a look at the magic of pecs and stuff. You're welcome. Thank the, mag you. the magic of plumbing, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, another evening, another time out here to keep working at this. I, have, I found that just kind of doing a little bit of a time at a time definitely makes this a little more manageable and approachable. So um, ah, the, the new strategy just seems to be working the best for this has been primarily using the pry bars and not using the, uh, the hammer as much. So I can use a small bar to kind of get started and get under there and then come in with the bigger bar and drive that even further. And that seems to be taking out slightly bigger pieces. Everything still leaves in a bucket, but at least the pieces are a little bigger than this or like this or Something like that. <laughs> this wasn't really designed to be removed. <laughs> it's just getting that getting that cement board off the subfloor is is a lot. The slate is easy. It's the cement board, which is insane. So I think that's about it for progress on this for now. That is about uh, seven hours <laughs> to get to, uh, to
to this point of being almost halfway done. Almost. So that is going to do it for this one. Donovan's back today. We are going to be uh, getting back to actually doing some more exciting things. And uh, we're going to try the uh, floor scraper thing. Yes. <laughs> as, Rather than the map scraper thing. I mean, thing. as much as I've been enjoying my home gym <laughs> setup that I've had here in the evenings, just kind of going at it for an hour and sweating to death and feeling like I, I worked on some, some guns or something. I'll be happy to be done with it. So we're going to see how that goes. But uh, next time, we'll be back in here taking care of removing the two exterior walls and getting it totally open. So that should be should be fun. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the home edition, actually, it's more like home demolition at this point, <laughs> please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions I have. And until next time, <laughs> happy tile smashing and wood stuff working and whatever. Do what you want. Do what you want. Do what you want. <laughs> <laughs>